So, uh, do you want to see an actual example of simple steps in beat making and how an aspiring producer that I worked with was able to become really good at what he does within a very short amount of time? In this video, we're going to just put all the theory aside. By the way, I, yo, I really like these sunglasses. They're pink, but pink is pretty cool. But anyways, in this video, we're going to put all the theories and all that aside. And I'm actually gonna show you a real case of somebody that learned music production, a lot of it from me, in a short amount of time. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and show you an inspirational story of my friend Jada B and his whole development of becoming someone who excels in music production. He started way later than me. There's a very big obstacle that he had to deal with that will make you think, wow, what's my excuse? And despite all of that, he was able to learn how to make beats very, very well using simple steps of beat making. And he'll talk about that in the video. So make sure to watch the whole video. I don't want you guys to miss anything because there's little things he says here and there that might really like spark something in your brain and really get you motivated. And speaking of not missing out on other information, if you haven't watched the other four videos of the six part series, make sure to go back and watch those because it has a lot of information that I do not want you to miss. I'm not doing this video for my health. It does make me happy and happy is healthy. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you get what I mean. All I'm saying is I couldn't get to where I am in my career without the information that I'm giving in those videos. So make sure to watch those. Don't miss out on that info. Now, as promised, here's the call between me and Jada B as he talks about simple steps of beat making and how it's helped him become a great music producer and how he simplified things and got down to the basics. Enjoy. All right, guys, I'm here with Jada B. He is a songwriter and a producer, mm -hmm. and he actually learned how to use um, the same software that I did, Propeller Head Reason, um, but actually, he actually had a lot of things that he had to overcome in order to become a producer. He's he he had some interesting obstacles along the way. Um, by the way, JDB, I, I, I'm rude. Sorry. <laughs> you can say what's up to everybody. Um, it's all good. I'm, just, I'm, I'm I'm over here just absorbing it all. I'm like yeah. Mm -hmm. Now nah, what's good, everybody? <laughs> what's up? Um. So yeah. So you know, you learned simple steps of beat making. Oh yeah. Um. And I kind of, you know, had my hand in helping you with that along the way. Mm -hmm. um you you were very independent a lot of times but you know i feel like as if i've kind of taken on almost a semi mentorship role for yeah. you when it comes to music production you've always had an ear for composing mm -hmm. but i don't know i'm curious um first of all you could just talk about your obstacles you had to overcome um, i mean to be a musician i mean honestly it started like from birth I mean, I'm, I was born deaf in one ear. I was deaf like the first four or five years of my life. Had to go through speech therapy. Um, you know, my grandma gave me like a toy piano and I started like playing with it. And then mm. like a week later, I told my mom, hey, look, I'm playing a song on my piano, your favorite song. She didn't believe me. So then I started playing it. <laughs> and and th that's when we knew from a young age that, OK, I'm clearly going to have something to do with music. You feel me? So... Yeah, so since then, like, I've never honestly thought about being, like, a recording artist or a producer, you mm -hmm. know, but until, like, 2006, you know, where you came along. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, you make music? Oh, that's cool. And then you actually play one of your songs. I'm like, oh, oh, you make <laughs> music. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I play the trumpet. <laughs> yeah, and I was playing the, the saxophone at the time. Right. But I thought it was interesting that you, you had no experience with software nope. or doing anything like that like you knew how to play the trumpet you knew about like right. um uh how to read sheet music and all yeah, stuff like that music, but yeah. it's like a whole new thing so you were kind of starting from scratch mm -hmm. with that journey as being a music producer it, um it was when i first. first met you it, it was the first like i've never like my whole life it's just oh practice your trumpet you know just come up with melodies on the piano never thought oh i'm just gonna apply this to software that i'm gonna be introduced to by you in the future I, 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 that was never my thought you know right but, um like it's kind of crazy how how the fact that i'm doing this now at the level that i'm doing it like <laughs> like it's comparable like, like this, the stuff i make now is kind of hot bro i mean <laughs> <laughs> that's why no listen that's why i had you out of all people jump on this call with me because right. your progress has been crazy 
And I want, you know, I'm not going to really want you to pat me on the back or whatever, but but I, I would like you to, you know, mm-hmm. let everybody know what you've learned from me. If you could think about it and narrow down some, like, s- specific important things um, when it comes to simple steps of beat making. Because, um, you know, that's kind of like my method of, like, you know, showing people the ropes oh. when it comes to beat making. So, like, mm-hmm. just what what is it that you've learned that's really stuck out to you, that's really helped you um, become one, a better music producer? Like, this seems like something small, but honestly, with the metronome, <laughs> like, mm. when, when I first <laughs> made beats, nothing was on beat. <laughs> nothing mm. at all. Like, are you using a metronome? No. <laughs> yeah, using those tools that they make mm-hmm. available to you. They're there for a reason. Yeah, like, one thing I didn't know, honestly, I had no idea what reason was. Like, I don't even mm. know when to begin. Like, it started with the, um, going through the instruments, going through the sounds. Um, started with you showing me that, okay, all right, the beat sounds okay. I mean, you're probably being nice, honestly. But <laughs> <laughs> but you need a bass line. You need to add pads. You need to bring out this sound more. This space sounds empty. Like, like what, what are you going to do to fill this space? Okay, now it's too loud. Like, how are you going to do to make it blend? Like, it's all like a... Like, I can't just say one thing that, you know... Yo. <laughs> That made me so proud just now. I, that made me so proud because you basically like kind of, I mean, you can't really touch on all the the simple steps or the steps. Basically, you know, simple steps of beat making is basically how the beat is built. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, so, and that's what I want to teach people like one by one because each step is crucial. Like right. you send a song to me and I don't like the sound choice of this little tiny percussion that's in the background. <laughs> and I'm like, this throws off the whole instrumental like it doesn't sound authentic and you know me i'm a stickler when it comes to making sure you're choosing the right sounds Mm -hmm. and everything when it comes to your uh your production yeah i mean like the first beat you made you think it's going to sound like hot like this is the hottest beat i made this sounds better than everything out and then 10 years later when we play the same beat back it's like bruh (laughs) (laughs) like. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's crazy how the perspective changes and I'm excited for you know the uh, students to really experience mm-hmm. that same thing that you experienced and see the growth over time and listen to that instrumental they make years later um, but you you kind of you know you had a slow start but oh, yeah. it wasn't long no. until you started really showing me stuff that was like yo this is this is something an artist could actually use mm-hmm um, um it, yeah. took, it took maybe like a couple maybe like a couple of months after the first you know like the first actual b i sent you to right. actually make progress but exactly. honestly like my biggest mistake from the beginning was i was too busy trying to sound like what i thought was hot rather than finding my own sound and then applying mm-hmm. it to what's hot it took yep. me 13 years to figure that out like look at me now like it took me that this long <laughs> to figure that out so yep. The, the last video that I just put out, uh-huh. I did mention that. Like, I, I gave people, there's one of the last videos I put out, but I gave people a uh, a big secret or mm. something. And it's it was about velocity and how important that is. Oh, controlling yeah. the velocity of the drums and velocity of, like, uh, like a piano, for example. Like, mm-hmm, every note can't be high in velocity. Otherwise, it's just going to sound boring and, and stagnant. That makes it sound like, real. <laughs> it took me so long to realize the importance of it. And the crazy thing is I feel like a lot of things that I've learned and applied to what I'm doing now are things that I always knew were there, mm-hmm. but I didn't take them seriously. And that was kind of, you know, that was kind of the turning point for me. Um, what about you? Did you have like any other like things that happened recently, like any epiphanies with this music production that's really made you kind of really level up your game like one yes. quick little thing you learned yes i just thought about it while you were saying that compression mm-hmm. like yes <laughs> yep yep like That's huge it, it took me this long to compress the mixer for the output of the sounds to actually blend the way they should sound or the way they should sound like per project because before i had like the default output so everything just sounded okay like it wasn't bad yep. Yep. But depending on your project, you know, de- depends on the compression. Like, it's not going to be heavy compression for something soft, you know. But you got, like, right. drums knocking. You got a whole lot going on. You want to bring out all the sounds without overpowering anything. You need compression. And you, yeah. you need compression and velocity in order to make it work. <laughs> yeah. 
So, yeah, no, but I mean, velocity is like it's such a small detail that people mm-hmm. could overlook. But right. what you're talking about, just to clarify for other people, is just the, the master track. Yeah. Making sure the master track has something on there that kind of makes the sound all come together and it brings out the proper thing. There's different ways to do that, but mm-hmm. you're being specific with propeller head reason. Oh, yeah. Which I'm, I encourage I'm people biased. to use. I encourage people to use it. You know, there's a reason intro, it's called. That's the what the software is called, and it's ninety nine dollars to get Reason Intro, and it gives you a lot of the abilities that regular Reason has. Oh, nice. So, yeah, um, but yeah, man, that I think that's pretty much pretty much it. I'm okay. glad I actually learned some stuff. I didn't know like your thought process was even working this way um, when it came to stuff like this because we don't talk about it. We just make uh. music and show each other <laughs> the music. Um, so thank you, man. Thank you, yeah, Jay, man, to no me doubt. for doing this. Appreciate it. Of course. It. Of course. All right, so I really hope you guys enjoyed that call with J to B. The thing about him is he saw me develop the simple steps of beat making over the years, but now the students that are going to be in the basics of beat making course are going to have a controlled, like, you know, layout of how things are supposed to be. He just saw me do trial and error over the years and still learn from me in that way which is great, but now everything's gonna be in a controlled environment and I'll have everything way more organized. Like, yeah, I know that for a fact that this is the best way for someone to learn. So he kind of had like a really rough version of Simple Steps of Beat Making presented to him, but you guys are gonna get the final product. My Basics of Beat Making course is launching only a few days from now. Imagine watching over my shoulders as I'm showing you exactly how to pick the right instruments, how to compose a song, and just produce something that's undeniably good while actually getting help from me all along the way to make sure that you are successful in becoming a good beat maker or a music producer. Imagine how much money you're gonna save (laughs) compared to trying to, you know, figure all this stuff out by yourself. Now, I know that might sound exciting, but as you can imagine, you know, and with everything, all these promises that I'm making, you know, of, of helping everyone, I can only do it with only, you know, a certain amount of students. Like, there's like a cap on how many I can really help. In fact, I'd like to keep this online course preferably kind of small, just to make sure everybody gets the help and support that they really need. So as much as I would like to help everyone, I can only accept a small number of students in order to maintain the level at my standard that I'm looking for, for, you know, helping people get the results that they're, that they're looking for. So please understand, this is a genuinely rare opportunity and spots for the course are gonna be filled on a first come, first serve basis. This is the first course I've ever created but it's been it's been a long time. I mean, I've been, you know, gathering up this following for two and a half years now or so, and I never really put out anything educational. So this is long awaited. So I, I honestly will not be surprised if it sells out in a few hours. I don't want people to miss out on this opportunity. So your best bet is just to keep your eyes open and jump on board as soon as the registration opens. To be honest, you don't really have a shot <laughs> of getting into the course if you don't sign up to the early bird waitlist as well, because once you sign up to that, you're gonna be notified about the course going live before it even goes live to the public, if it even gets that far. For the past two or three years, whatever it's been, people have been emailing me, messaging me, commenting constantly, asking me about getting started with music production. How do I learn how to make beats? How do I learn this? How do I learn that? This time you're gonna learn everything. This is your chance to learn everything that I know to get started. Now the next video is probably the most important. I'm gonna be giving you exact instructions on what you can do to make sure that you can reserve a spot in this course for basics of beat making. I'll also share some information on the basics of beat making online course and kind of explain more about it and show you why it may be a little bit different than other courses you may have seen about beat making if you've seen any. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next video. Not up.